What's going on everybody? We're testing tires, we're testing brakes, we're going back to the track. Let's go. What's up everybody, it's JP from edgeautosport.com. Thank you so much for joining us. We are taking the car back to the track. The major differences this time are the new brake pads and rotors and stainless steel brake lines that we put on the car. We are also gonna be doing a back-to-back -back from stock tires to new tires. Much, much stickier tire, we'll explain that later, but uh, we're gonna do some back-to-back -back stuff and just see where the car stands with just those modifications. We really need brakes before we go any further in order to validate any of this stuff that we're doing. We can't slow the damn car down without an upgraded you know, set of pads and rotors at least. So that's what we did last time, as you can see you know, in a previous video, but now we're taking it to the track and let's go see the differences. All checked in, I'm gonna get the tire pressures at the desired values here and just kind of, I don't know, get the cars just kind of ready, make sure everything's just ready to go really quick. So I kind of did that last night, but just do the tire pressures mainly. So that's it. I've been coming out here now for solid for three years. It's gonna be oh, more nice. heat today. And I just want to try a little weight reduction. Casey needs to change the tire while he's out on the track. All right, everybody. So we're about ready to go out for our first session. So the first session, we are going back out in the ST. The only changes that have been made are pads, rotors, and brake lines, and a rear motor mount. The rear motor mount's not gonna do a ton. Uh, certainly not as much as the brakes, but uh, those are the two modifications we made to the car. All the, the tires and wheels are still the same. Everything is still the same. No suspension upgrades, nothing like that. So we'll go see what we can do with that. And then we're gonna go out next session with a little special surprise we'll get to after this session. So last time we were at 220, uh, we kind of did not get a perfect recording from the GPS on the last time out. That's why on the last video, it was not like a down to the hundredth time. But we've got, to, we've got a mount for the phone now in front of me. It should be able to pick up GPS a lot better than the cup holder where the, where the phone was in the cup holder last time. So, uh, so we'll see what she does. We should get an accurate lap time. We'll make sure to report back. And uh, so we're shooting for, my guess is, I think this thing is gonna go five seconds faster with brakes. And not just because the car becomes faster, but because you can you can drive the car harder without worrying about it and feeling safer going into the turn. So I think we should pick up a good five seconds uh, just from the brakes, so we'll see. see.
right, so I just pulled in from first session. Uh, unfortunately, there's too many cars on track, which is part of a track day. Uh, it kind of sucks, but I was able to get a 219.66, which is technically faster than the last time I was out here without, I probably had like two or three turns, maybe even four turns on that session that I could not go as hard as I wanted because I had people in front of me. So I think, I think it would be, it would definitely be two, three seconds minimum, uh, even with, well, you know, just not a clean lap. So uh, the car is definitely faster. The brakes are super consistent from lap to lap. You can pretty much rely on them and count on them. And it's the same exact braking power. The car is, I'm going way, way faster and completely confidently. So it is just a hundred percent night and day difference with these brakes. I probably should have given it a little bit more cool down time, maybe uh, more than half a lap of cool down because the, uh, the brakes are smoking right now, <laughs> but I went around the pits a little bit, cooled them down, so they should be okay. Um, but yeah, there's first session down. Let's see what she does on the next one. All right guys, so session two with the ST is about to start. One change we are making is wheels and tires. So that's what we wanted to update you on. We are kind of doing a back-to-back -back while we're here at the track of the stock tires versus these nice meaty 245 wide they are Vulcan Azenis RT660s. These are pretty new. And as you can see, they're super duper aggressive and sticky looking. So we're gonna see if that makes us go faster. We got Anki TSVs. Um, these are eight and a half inch wide. So yeah, we're gonna stick these on the car and see how it feels, see if we can go any faster. You know, like we've said earlier in the video, it's gonna be subjective. If we run into traffic, you know, who knows how good of a time we'll get, but. I'll definitely be able to report back how good they feel uh, in, in any major differences. So I expect there to be a noticeable difference uh, with these really, really super duper sticky tires. So let's get, a, uh, let's get them on the car before next session, which starts in about 15 minutes, and we'll be good to go. All right, ready to take it out again. Let's go see what these tires can do.
guys, that is it. Day number two at the track is over. Had a blast on that second session out with the new tires. Man, those tires are a dream compared to the stock ones. I thought the stock ones were like, they were better than what I thought they would be out on the track. But man, putting those sticky, sticky tires on just totally changed the game. The confidence level raised, the car is like crazy, crazy good uh, now. So I can't even imagine what it's gonna be like with a really, really nice suspension setup and some more power. So that's gonna be awesome. Uh, ended up hitting a 214, 365, which is a lot faster than the last session out. I did get like three really, really clean laps with no traffic. That's the major difference I'd say in those times. Definitely picked up some time from the tires without question, but uh, I still feel like I can push a lot further. So I'm looking forward to keeping, you know, keep modding the car and, and come out here and, and keep pushing it. So 214 is not too bad. I, I suspected we'd do right around 215 maybe. 214 is where we ended up at, and I feel like there's more in me just with this setup alone. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Like, subscribe, let us know what you think. Ask a question in the comments, let us know, and uh, we'll be happy to help you out. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this. We'll talk to you next time. You guys thought we were done, but we have not done any data in this video yet. So here I am with some data. JP has some corner speeds to talk about and I've got some temperatures. So I'll do corner speeds first. So <clears throat> one unfortunate thing is I decided to get a new phone in between the first time we went to the track and the second time. So all the data I had of like completely bone stock focus, uh, you know, GPS data is all gone. But the data I do have is stock tires to upgraded tires. So just that comparison only. Um, I took like four corners that are fairly high speed, fairly like need a lot of grip corners to go fast. And I just compared the mile an hour. So turn one was 49.9 mile an hour on the, on the stock tires, 53.6 mile an hour on the stickier tires. Turn four was the only one where I had like a backwards uh, where it went slower, 66.1 to 62.1. I will say there was low GPS like signal on my fast lap. So I don't know if that had something to do with that or if I just got a little bit crazy on the stock tires, I never know. But uh, turn seven, 67.2 mile an hour in the slow uh, on the stock tires, 71.2 mile an hour on the upgraded tires. Turn nine, 44.2 mile an hour on the stock tires, 46.4 mile an hour on the fast tires. Those were like the slowest points of the corner. I can tell you right now, like those tires totally changed the ball game and the confidence factor went up dramatically um, with the upgraded tires. So two, three mile an hour in any given corner faster around every single corner is gonna add up to a lot faster times. So we're pretty excited to see that little bit of data so far. So temperatures. First of all, um, JP got a new phone and lost all data. The other little glitch in this matrix we have here <laughs> is uh, we were messing with the car the other day and we swapped it back to the stock tune and forgot about it. So <laughs> all of this... <laughs> I went to go get an emissions <laughs> test and I flashed the stock map, which, you know, like we didn't really need to technically, but I just put the stock map on just to go do an emissions test and uh, yeah, forgot to take it off. So there you go. All the lap times, the 214 that he ran with the sticky tires uh, was all done on the stock tune. <laughs> One of the things that we that we thought was interesting is the, the speeds and the straights where he was getting up to about 106 miles an hour, I think was the fastest that I he got to. I think yeah. And we were actually comparing cornering speeds with Jeff and the Supra over there on the lift uh, right now. Um, but Jeff's corner speeds and JP's corner speeds are actually pretty much the same. And in most cases, JP's corner speeds are faster yeah. than the Supra. But Jeff's doing 142 miles an hour in the straights, whereas JP's only doing 106. So we probably need a little bit more power. And he ran a 206, 206 I think, yeah. So like crazy faster uh, lap time comparison, but corner speeds, I was actually faster on a handful of the corners. So uh, power has a lot to do with good times on, on a long road course. But anyways, for now, we're gonna talk about the temperatures for where it sits now, completely stock. We started out, charge air temperatures were 91 degrees, Coolant temp started at 166 when the log started. Oil temperature 131.6, so fairly cool for the warm up lap. And as you can see here, as I click over here in this data log, you can just see the temperatures start to increase and they keep increasing and they just keep increasing as we're going lap after lap after lap. As you can see boost and throttle closures on the stock tune up here going crazy and 
uh, and all that stuff. But anyways, as we're going, we're up, coolant's up to 230 degrees. Charge air temps are in the 170s, and oil right now is at 217. And you can just see it all just keeps going higher and higher and higher. You can see the green line here, which is charge air temp, uh, fluctuates more, but that's because you have like periods of slowing down where the temps are getting plenty of airflow because the car's moving, so it's dropping. But coolant and oil and everything else are just steadily increasing. And it looks like over here, if we look at our max settings here, uh, our max charge air temp in green was 195. Our max coolant temp was 240.4 degrees, and our max oil temp was 270.9. Coolant here is yellow, um, oil is white. That's it's pretty warm. I, yeah, I will say, like, I, I watched those temperatures the entire time and I monitored them. That's when I stopped and started cooling down. Uh, one interesting thing from a driver perspective, uh, the parts that we put on the car, the brakes, uh, that you know impacted my ability to go faster the most uh, from the last time we went out like I I could keep going I, I pulled off because of temperatures I just it's just it wasn't worth it to me to just keep pushing the car uh, there was nothing left to prove at that point I felt like I had put in a good lap and so you see those temperatures and you think okay at this point already after breaks after a brake upgrade your weakest link now at the track is cooling right like right off the bat and, and this is a stock tune no parts, we have a rear motor mount, that's it. There's no part, there are no parts on this car, so automatically, right? And it was like 65 degrees out. Yep. It, it's not even really that hot. So cooling immediately becomes the weak point after you put on brakes on the car. And by the way, just to give you an idea of how much, like when you, for how much you can push the car on upgraded brakes, the highest I got on oil temp last time out on like a, a two or three lap session was two, 35 or 240 on yeah. oil, something like that. I, no, two, I think you might have gotten to like 215 or 220 on coolant, and I don't remember what oil was. It wasn't very high, but I remember if you guys remember from the previous video, I actually talked about the temperatures, and one of the things that I commented on is like there was not a single problem with temperatures. That's the, what happens when you can push yeah, the car the just brakes, like 10%, 20% more. The, the brakes change that. One of the things I see here uh, also is you start to get a little bit of knock as temperatures get up there. So I think if we were running the custom tune, that would be even bigger problem. Yeah. I, I really wish we could have seen what that what that tune did. Um, I think you would have probably seen some faster mile an hour in the straights and yeah. stuff, and probably even a faster time, maybe maybe even one, maybe two seconds faster. The other problem is you probably wouldn't have been able to go as long because uh, the the temperatures would have gotten higher faster. So uh, with that and with that being said, I think uh, the next step is we just need to find some parts to to get this thing to run a little bit cooler yeah I don't I don't really have uh, much of an idea of where to find those yet but it could be right underneath our noses <laughs> <laughs> so yeah there you go we've got a mountain of parts we're literally sitting on it right now our ass could fall through this box at any moment uh, but all this stuff is gonna be put on the car at some point in time Obviously the big boxes, exhausts and stuff like that, and that's all cool fancy stuff, but we even have stuff like radium catch cans and PCB plates and um, just other things that are going to be very highly functional modifications that will be uh, fun to show you guys about and fun to show you the effects that they have on the car and at the track and on performance overall. Some of this pile is also redundant because we are trying out different versions of the same type of parts. Comparison like and stuff. Most of these boxes that we're sitting on are exhaust. Uh, we're gonna end up with one of them, but we're gonna show you all of them. Anyways, I think I interrupted you closing the video, so we can get <laughs> back to that now, I believe. We've shared all the data that we need to. Anyway, by the way, I was gonna tell you before I close this out, uh, we haven't formally announced the name of the project yet, I don't think. One of the commenters had, send pro had said uh, project full send, but we are definitely not full sending this car. We've already tried to full send a car. That car's and, full uh, send over there. <laughs> it's, it's fully uh, being sent onto the concrete sitting in one place right now. But So we're gonna name this project uh, half send, project half send, because we are, we are half sending it. Although we are gonna have some fun and we are gonna get kind of crazy on it. But we're keeping stock motor. We're probably like the mo the craziest upgrade we're gonna do is like a big turbo and maybe a clutch. You know, we'll see how far we get with a stock clutch, but that, that's as far as we're taking it. So project Basically, half Basically, we want it to be a daily driven car that you can take to the track and have some fun. Yeah. So, yeah. so anyway, send. 
That was track day number two. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that. Uh, it's like so much fun to go to the track. I can't wait to do it again and again and again, but, uh, and, and to keep looking at the data and showing you guys. So hopefully you guys enjoy that. Uh, thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe, like, hit that bell, and uh, we'll see you on the next one. Thanks, guys.